there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as our Father, brothers all are we, let me walk with my brother, my brother in perfect harmony, let peace begin with me, Let's this be the moment now. Every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. And let it begin. Good morning. 9-11-2001. Do you remember? At 8.46, the North Tower of the World Trade Center was hit by flight number 11. At 9.03, the South Tower of the World Trade Center is hit by flight number 175. At 9.37, the Pentagon is hit by hijacked flight number 77. At 9.59, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapses. At 10.03, Flight 93 crashes into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. At 10.28, the North Tower of the World Trade Center collapses. 2,996 people died in the 9-11 attacks. Hundreds more have died since then due to the toxic smoke and hazardous materials that they inhaled while they worked on what they called the pile. We made a solemn promise to the survivors of 9-11, to the families who lost loved ones, and to each other that we would remember this day. As time marches on and as our memories fade, we must strive to keep our promise and our promise is to never forget. I ask we now have a moment of silence. The storm clouds gather far across the sea. Let us wear a
Good morning. A day of remembrance. I'll be brief in my comments, but I want to piggyback on Chief Spencer's comments. This is speaking from one generation to the next. On my way in this morning, I had my typical Uber drive, and I'm, I'm talking to the driver. And he would ask me, where was I going? And I explained I had to go and pay homage, and there was a ceremony going on in the courthouse. And while he was aware of 9-11, he didn't understand. I had to give him context. Right, so beyond all the conspiracy theories and all that, we had a very good conversation about the response. And I asked the fundamental question of that, all, just like with all of you, where were you that morning? This is for the citizens. We've got to come back to those who went in. Where were you? Where's your mindset? Uh, the morning before, uh, me, I just left uh, the banking industry uh, for the most part. I woke up that next morning, coffee in hand like you know I normally do. And I'm watching the TV. And I'm watching this unfold. And it's hidden heart because I'm like, okay, I've got a first cousin here. Where is he? And as I'm watching this unfold, all of you likewise, whether you had relatives that were there in that city, somewhere else, it became real for you. You begin to get drawn in. And as I'm watching this unfold, and as I'm calling my family and trying to find out where is my cousin, where is my loved one, where are they, I begin to see first responders. I, be I begin to see in a different light. I'm thinking one thing, but I'm watching these gentlemen and these women go in. And they're going in in such a way as the story is being told. We're watching it unfold. My heart is going one way, but yet I'm seeing them go another way. Listen, I was trying to explain to this, this young man about the importance and the importance in government of first responders. Because without them, they're the lifeblood of any county, any state, in our country. They're the ones that run into battle. They're the ones that's running in to save lives. And so I was explaining to him that it's important to always take a step back. And remember, that could be you, that could be a loved one, that they're going in on. By the time I got here, maybe not even an hour ago, and I pulled up right here in front of these steps, by the time I got done explaining and sharing and imparting with him, he says, thank you so much. And he was almost in tears because he did, he did not know. No one took time to explain the importance of a day so, such as this. So to all of you, on behalf of the citizens here in Douglas County, I need you to hear this, that you must always remember, but beyond that, you must pass it forward. You must always explain. And for that, to our, our first responders, our fire, our EMS, our 911, our military, our veterans, I do salute you all. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes this portion of the program. We will continue the program in Citizens Hall um, with our address from State Representative Roger Bruce and remarks from Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones. We will also be hearing from our Chief Scott Spencer, Sheriff Tim Pounds, and Chief Gary Sparks. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the second portion of our Patriots Day ceremony. So I am Tabria Cobb, the External Affairs Coordinator, and now I would like to bring up Ma um, Chair uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones. Good morning. Good morning. To the citizens of Douglas County, our elected officials, the employee, the employees of this local government, and most Importantly, our first responders of Douglas County, Douglasville, and Georgia at large, and these United States. And our first responders include our U.S. military and our veterans as well. I bring greetings to you today on behalf of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners as we commemorate a somber day of agony that will forever resonate in our minds. The 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center left both Americans and international citizens alike shattered and fearful. Our first responders stood up and exemplified strength, bravery, and resilience under one of the most devastating attacks 
on the U.S. soil. Although the terrorists attacked on American ground, attack on American ground shook our country to its core, we have proven that liberty and freedom will continue to pers persevere, even under the most unfavorable circumstances. First responders, please stand if you are standing, and let's just give them a hand for their magnificent work. Thank you so much, and again, I bring greetings to you from the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. Now for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we will have a national anthem from Sergeant Melissa Harris. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the Sergeant Harris. Now I would like to call up Pastor Vermin Palmer for our words of encouragement and invocation. I want to thank you for the honor of being able to stand on behalf of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the only hope of the world. And I'm glad that I know him is my personal Savior, that Jesus washed my sins away, and I thank him for all that he's done. One song came to my mind when I was asked to speak this morning, and that is our gospel song that says, Thank you for giving to the Lord. 
And the song said, for I am the life that was changed. And the song talks about when people get to heaven, that they will look up people that has meant so much to them, that has helped them along life's way, who has helped them, and that they would thank them for giving to the Lord. But I come this way to thank our first responders for giving to the Lord, for we are the lives that has been saved by their bravery and by them doing what they do for us. They go into buildings when we run out. They go to the fires when we will not. Our police officers will run into gunfire when we flee. Tracy and I, my wife and I, has a son that's a police officer in Paulding County, and that sure has helped us to pray even more earnest for our police officers, for God to help them and to give them strength. But one word came to my mind when we say thank you to them, and that word is respect. I think that is something that our country has gone away from when we need today more than we've ever needed it. When our flag is flown and our anthem is played, every American ought to stand to their feet and thank the Lord for being born in the greatest country on this earth. Is she perfect? No. Has she made mistakes? Yes. But does she strive for perfection? I believe she does because we are guided by the perfect one, and that's our Lord, Jesus Christ. Trace and I was at an event years ago, and they were singing patriotic songs. And they brought a family, brought their dad in. He was in a wheelchair. He was missing his leg on the left side from the knee down. His left arm had still had some material in it from the war. And I talked to him about his uh, service to us. And we had a good time talking. And it came time to when they played our Pledge of Allegiance and they asked us to stand. And I was trying to help him up and he pushed me away. And he stood up on his own. And I saw him with tears in his eyes and he put his hand over his heart and he said it was worth it. And I want to say to all of those that have fought for our freedom, the police officers, the firemen, you see, they see what we don't see. They hear what we don't hear. They go where we don't have to go. And I believe we owe them a debt of gratitude and thankfulness for all they do on our behalf. And I want to say, as the song says, thank you for giving because we are the life that was changed. There's a course of a song that I tried to live my life by, and I believe it will help all of us. They said others, Lord, yes, others. Let this my motto be, that when I've lived for others, then I have lived like thee. Our Father, Lord, I want to thank you for the privilege to stand this morning before these first responders and before these that head up this county. I pray that you'd bless them. I pray, Lord, that you'd guide them. I pray, Lord, that you'd direct them. I pray, dear Lord, that we will turn again to Thee. I pray, dear Father, that You will help us in these days. And Lord, before I finish, let me also thank You for those that gave their lives on that day, on 9-11. I pray, Lord, that You'd bless their families, and I pray that You'd be with them. And Lord, forever be with our first responders and help them and guide them and help us when we see them just to say thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Palmer. Now we will have our address by Representative Roger Bruce. Good morning, everybody. I uh, serve as the chair of the Douglas County delegation in the Georgia House of Representatives. And it's always difficult to come to events like this because there's no way to really adequately say thank you uh, for what uh, the first uh, responders do for us, what the military does for us. Uh, we, we just don't know how to say thank you in a proper way. And I know we come and we, we, we stand before you here and try to, to, to express it, but there's just no adequate way to do it. Uh, I think all of us remember where we were on 9-11 when this happened. Uh, I was at work and somebody came running down the hallway and they said, get the TV, turn it on. Uh, a plane just crashed into 
into the World Trade Center. And I'm from New York. I grew up in New York. And uh, I was like, you know, I don't believe that. You know, we thought it was like a joke or something. And we turned the TV on and we saw it unfolding. And uh, our first reaction was that the, there was something just wrong with the aircraft and it, it crashed. And then when the second one hit, everybody said something's really wrong here. We are under attack. And, uh, but everybody that said that we were under attack stayed right where they were. They did not leave that room. And as we continued to watch what was going on, we saw people going into what was happening on TV. Uh, now we're hearing about a lot of the first offenders that went in there, uh, they're suffering with all kinds of uh, illnesses and things because of their courage when they ran in there. Some of them are dealing with cancer, they're dealing with other things. And in the General Assembly, we are working real hard to try to recognize that. And uh, we have people who, they were up in New York when that happened, but some of them live down here now. They've moved here, they've tried to change their lives. And uh, so we are passing legislation or attempting to pass legislation to help them with all of their medical uh, issues to make sure that those things are taken care of. Their families should not have to go through another experience like they went through that day. So I just wanted to come out this morning and, and say thank you in my own humble way for what you guys have done, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for what you've done for the citizens in Douglas County, for the citizens in the state, for citizens across this nation. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And it's just unbelievable what you guys have done. So again, thank you for letting me be part of this. Thank you for letting me say thank you to you. And if there are ways that, if you are a veteran, if there's ways that we can help you at the Capitol, I want to know about it because we're going to do everything we can to help you. All right? Thank you so much. Now we will have a few remarks from Chief Scott Spencer. As we pause to remember the events of 9-11-2001, it is appropriate that we remember the sacrifice that was made by so many ordinary people that day. The citizen heroes of Flight 93 who sacrificed themselves to overthrow the hijackers who were intent on taking more lives. The military men and women in the Pentagon who rushed in to help rescue their fallen co-workers who were hurt and trapped. The NYPD police and Port Authority officers who helped evacuate the towers without regard to their own safety. And of course, the FDNY firefighters and EMTs who did what they were trained to do. And I honestly think that for many of them, they knew that this call that they were on that day would probably be their last call. But they did what they were trained to do. And they, and they still did it. These are all ordinary people who did extraordinary things that day 18 years ago. We must never forget them or what they did. And as we remember the horrific events of 9-11, I want us to take just a minute for all of us to stop and think about 9-12. Because the day after 9-11, it didn't matter what color you were, what your sexual orientation was, what religion you were, or what politics, you know, what, what side you were on there. On 9 12, we all came together as one. We came together as America. So if 9 11, as, as sad as it was, it brought our country together. Uh, and that's something we don't ever need to forget. I'm humbled and honored to represent the men and women of the Douglas County Fire Department as we express our gratitude to the patriots of 9 11. Those ordinary people did so many extraordinary things that day. And to all of those who continue to protect us, may God bless you, our great nation, our great state, and our great county. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Sheriff Tim Pounds, followed by Chief Gary Sparks.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's always an honor and a pleasure to stand here and talk about our patriots. It really is because, you know, the world will never, ever be the same after 911. We go on every day trying to carry on like it's normal, but I was at work at the old jail the day of it, and uh, I'm sitting at my desk. I went to look at the TV, and I saw innocent folks with badges on running into this building that was already smoking. Now, these folks got up that particular morning, headed to work, intending to go back home to their families. But there's so many of them that didn't get to return home to their family. Now, if I can imagine that with me, some of us are lucky because we didn't shoot New York to go to work in law enforcement. This could have been one of us. But I'm going to brag on them a little bit. I got 73 of them that work at Douglas County Sheriff's Department. I had worked at Douglas County Sheriff's Department. And I consider them having a double whammy. They defended the country, and it just wasn't enough for them. So they came. Now they're defending our community, which is Douglas County. And as uh, Roger said, State Reverend Roger said, we can sit here all day long and say thank you and never said enough time. Because, you know, you see people that someone said earlier, he got one leg, said nothing, he got one arm. Now, we were probably at home in our bed sleep when he was out there defending our country. So I can stand there and say thank you, thank you, but I couldn't get enough. But I really do want to thank especially those that are still doing it today. Because you don't know it may happen again. But the good thing about it, when you wear this bad, you stay ready. We don't know what's going to happen from day to day. But we try to stay strong, believe in the Lord, and ask him to help us make this journey through our lives. Thank you all. Good morning, everybody. It's hard to come behind all the speakers that's already spoken because they done took all my words. <laughs> but, um, you know, this, uh, this date of 9-11 uh, is one that we should all reflect on and understand is, uh, about the men and women who not only uh, died in New York that day, but the men and women that had to go die on a battlefield and still die because it hadn't stopped. And then we reflect back and look at our country and see the, how we sometimes grow apart from each other, whether it's based on politics or whatever. But we got to understand that we are one. And we became one that day, but oftentimes we so soon to forget uh, that we are one and we start letting distractions seek and creep into our mindset and, and it distort us and it bring us apart until something else tragic happens and then we try to go back together. But we gotta understand, we gotta stay as one, continuously. Not when something tragic like 9-11 happened, but at all times. And I'm, I'm happy to say that I, I, I do feel as being the police chief and serving here in Douglasville for 30, 30 some odd years, <laughs> a long time, that I can uh, truly say that uh, we in this community, uh, we are one. That's our motto at the police department. And we try to continue to serve. It's about service. And the one that's not in a service capacity like me, the sheriff, or the, uh, the fire chief, the citizens, you have to serve, like the pastor said. You know, we got to serve one another. That's what Jesus did. He come out, not looking, about, looking at what's best for me, but what's best for the community, serving others. You know, not looking for how I'm going to get my pockets big and don't care about my fellow citizens. Serving others, that's what we got to be about. And we could serve one another as Christ has served us and laid down his life for us then our country will be better. We won't be all so divisive when all these old political ideologies and 
whatever the case may be, I don't care what it is, we can come together in one and be Americans. That's what we do. We all bleed red. It don't bleed all these other different colors. So let's get our let's get everything back together. We can, you know, the, the differences between us, that will bring make us strong. I think the good Lord wanted everybody to be the same thing he did that back when he made the heavens and the earth. But he didn't do it. Diversity is the key. So let's be diversified as one, serve one another, love one another, and keep our community safe. Me, the sheriff, and the police chief, I mean the fire chief, we can't do it by ourselves, each one of us. If you see something, say something. You know, if you see something that's wrong, out of order, speak up. You know, uh, not trying to tear people down, but to build people up. That's what it's all about. I love all of you all, and thank you for the opportunity to come up here and just share a few words. God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, Chief Sparks. I'm Tiffany Stewart Stanley, the Director of External Affairs for Douglas County. And I'd just like to thank all of our participants who participated today. Um, I really appreciate you guys participating in the program. And for all of our first responders and active military, thank you for all that you do. We are very appreciative here. And I also would like to thank the Board of Commissioners for sanctioning and putting on this program because I think it's a great thing that we are honoring the people in our community. I'd also like to thank Director Rick Martin and his department for their of the Department of Communications for their support in this program. And I would also like to thank Tabria Cobb. She put this program together. She's responsible for it, so we want to give her a round of applause for the great job that she did. Um, so there is still some breakfast upstairs, some Chick-fil-A biscuits, some coffee and juice. So if you haven't gotten it, please partake in that. I want to thank you all so much for being here today, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.